G'day folks, welcome to another video. Today we are looking at the Garmin Rhino 750. We will look at some of the features of it. I will demonstrate some of the things that I find pretty interesting with this unit. Then we'll compare it to some other options out in the marketplace. So first thing to note, this is not a full review. I haven't had a chance to test it. Still in lockdown here in Melbourne, so we're just stuck. Basically, whatever I can do around the house is about it, and in the shed. We'll go through the unboxing first. I don't know why we like him unboxings, but we do. The manual, GPS, a little belt clip, power adapter, mini USB cable, get the battery. Clicks in the back, twist to lock, and we're done. I put out the question a few days back about what are some of the questions that you want answered. I had a couple of responses, so I'll attempt to cover those off as best as I can. So the Garmin Rhino 750 is a all-in-one UHF and GPS unit. It's a five watt UHF radio, three inch touchscreen GPS. On the GPS side, it has, what is it, a micro SD card slot, so you can upgrade that, upgrade the, the storage and add maps to it, no problem. It's a full touchscreen and it's also a pinch to zoom, you know, what we're all used to these days, which I find really, really handy. The best feature of this, as far as I'm concerned, is it's the buddy tracking. And I'll just jump to a separate clip now and we'll go through that. So one of the really cool features about the Rhino is its ability to track your buddy. So you can see on the screen below or to the side or somewhere um, how the different people come up on the screen. For the purposes of this exercise, this one, I'm holding Peter, will see what happens when I walk up the back there. So at the moment, they are together on the screen. As I walk up the back, I'll talk on the UHF. You'll hear the sound. You'll see the position update on the map. Once I finish this transmission, you'll see me appear on the map. I'll continue to walk a bit further. Now with these, you can own, they only transmit the position data every 30 seconds. On the top of the screen, it gives you a little countdown timer for how long you've got to go before it will do that. And so now, after this transmission, you'll see it will update again. We shall be done. I'll go up the back. Um, back corner. Another back corner. And right in front. So as you can see, that is super handy. If you've ever, you know, been on the receiving end of a uh, of a UHF call, you know, I've I've taken a wrong turn and now I need some help. It's like where are you, you know? With this, you can straight away see. One of the really handy features too is the ability to transfer tracks between units on the track and not just between Garmin Rhinos, but other Garmin GPS units. So I can transfer a track from my Rhino to, a, to the Montana, for example. Why would you want to transfer tracks? Well, we've been on rides where someone in the group has maybe not got the, the email with all the tracks that we're following for the day, you're out there, or they might have got one or two of them loaded, but they haven't got all the rest. So you're out there in the middle of the day, you can now uh, exchange tracks so that you've all got the same thing. We just go into uh, share wirelessly, which is one of the options. And on the, I'll send from Send from the left hand one here. Send. Use Bluetooth. Send a track. I'm going to send track A1. 
and receive on this one. Searching, oh, press send. It's connected and off it goes. And you can see the percentages ticking through there as it sends them. Yeah, it's a really useful feature to, tra to be able to transfer a track. And this is one of, the, one of the key reasons that all of the guys I ride with, we all use Garmin units. For a long time, we've used the Montanas. Um, the Rhinos are exactly the same uh, operating system, whatever, it's all Garmin stuff, so it's all good. And it, one of the key reasons that we all use them is that it means we all have the same information. Here we go, it's just finished. If I go to the track manager now on the, the receiving one, there we go there, we've got A1 on, uh, on the unit. So we all have the same information. We all are following the same route or the same track. Uh, and it just simplifies things and it means everybody's looking at the same thing. Now something else I tested on this was the battery life. So I've got, I've tested one of these with the battery on 100%, the other one on 70%. And I'll put a table up here with how the batteries looked at the end of the day, but basically the, if it's on 100%, you're gonna get about eight hours use out of it. That's fully on 100% with no dimming of the screen. And if it's on 70%, you'll get 13 hours. So that's that's a long time out of that battery. Um, I did notice that it does take a long time to charge. However, it only charges at about 300 milliamps per hour. And it's a 2400 milliamp hour battery, I think. If you're gonna use it without uh, hard wiring it on the bike to a power source, it's going to take overnight to recharge. And if you're recharging off your bike battery overnight, watch out because it'll it'll drain it. It'll drain one of these batteries out of these bikes for sure while it recharges because there are only small batteries in the bike. I can compare it somewhat to the Montana because this is what I've got and this is what I've been using. The first one is the screen brightness. And as you can see in this shot, so just between the two on 100%, there's a, there's a fair difference in brightness, but I think it'll be okay. I'm, I'm hoping it'll be okay. The Montana is definitely a very easy screen to read. It's also larger, obviously. It's a, it's a four inch screen compared to a three inch screen on the, on the Rhino. So the big difference between the Rhino and the Garmin Montana, as far as mounting goes, is the connections. So with the, Gar with the Rhino, the power is a mini USB plug there, whereas the Montana, it's all weatherproof and waterproof. The Rhino sits in the cradle. This cradle's for the 650, but the 750 fits in it. And then you have to connect your mini USB port into the back of the unit. So by doing so, you are, you are lifting the, the rubber flap and uh, therefore it's no longer waterproof, is it? Whereas on the Montana, it has the rugged mount. This simply stays wide to your bike all the time. The Montana clicks in and out of the cradle. So from the outset, I, I much prefer the rugged mount of the Montana. The screen size is better. Um, the rugged mount means it maintains its waterproofness. I've got two buddies who use these and they've used them for years and the 750 and the, the 650, they will use these in the rain and just, they, they don't even take the power cord out. They just leave the rubber flap open, keep the uh, mini USB plugged in and they just keep using it. Hasn't, hasn't been a problem. One of the questions I got was about comparing um, the Rhino with uh, something like the Voyager Pro. I had to look that up, see what the Voyager Pro was. It's an all-in-one dash unit. It has engine information on it and it has um, full screen maps as well. Four inch screen. And like I said, you can display engine information. So you can put your speedo up there, uh, your taco, your engine temperature uh, and volts. From what I've read, the, um, the buddy tracking on the Voyager Pro 
requires everybody to have the same unit. Also supposed to have an external antenna to give you the, the greater range. Uh, you can't have routable maps. You can't do turn by turn directions, whereas you can on the, the Rhino 750. All the bike information that's available on the Voyager, I know for the TACO, you need to install the TACO sensor. So you know, that's just another wire that you've got to put in and hook up to it. Um, volts is volts. Speedo is available from the GPS anyway. And what else was there? Engine temperature. I, I'm guessing that's another sensor that you have to install. On the Rhino, I have a little dashboard set up where I get, I have a little mini dashboard at the top of the, the map screen. I have the time, I have the speed, which simply takes it off the GPS and whatever other information you want. So I have a little temperature sensor on the bike just for ambient temperature. It's not reading it at the moment uh, and elevation, or you can change that to, you know, distance to destination if you're following a map or, or whatever. Another thing that people compare these to a lot is uh, mobile phones. So the big question is, why should I buy a GPS when I have a mobile phone in my pocket, which does all the same things? And the maps and the apps and things on these are pretty darn good at the, nowadays. One is around cost. Now, not necessarily this one because this is $750, but you can get cheaper ones. And a cheaper GPS, like a couple of hundred dollars, far cheaper than having you know a thousand dollar phone sitting on your bike most motorcycle gps's will be waterproof you know without any cases without anything so that's that's another win they're typically more rugged so vibration on bikes will kill mobile phones and electronics pretty quick so i i would just prefer to have a separate unit keep my phone in my pocket pull it out when i want to take a photo the gps is at the one out there in the, in the in the dust and in the rain and getting the mud on it and all the rest of it and bounced around and sometimes dropped and uh, offline maps as well. So the entire country I have on the GPS. I don't need to worry about you know downloading stuff before the trip. I know you can get offline maps on, on the phones. I would prefer to have it on the GPS. Everyone in our group has the same unit. We have the same Garmin system, which means we have the same maps which means we have the same, we can have the same tracks displayed. So we're all looking at the same information. So why did I buy the Rhino? Uh, if you've watched some of my previous videos, you'll have seen this has been a bit of a journey. My original UHF um, packed it in, it's needed an update. And so in the research, I discovered the Garmin Rhino. And the more that I looked at it, the more I liked some of the features. The first important feature is that it just reduces some clutter. It used to have the UHF up on the bars here and the Montana down here. Now I've got one unit and I think the Rhino just suits the overall package, the overall you know, philosophy, I suppose, of ADV light. Reduces clutter, simplifies things, one less thing on the bars. Second reason is the buddy tracking. The more I looked at it, the more I really liked this idea. So there's now four people in our group that all ride with rhinos. We all appear on the same screen. I reckon that is an awesome safety feature and it just, it just makes things a lot easier to know where people are at. Third reason, I wanted the system to be compatible with the UHF Bluetooth dongle uh, solution that I've got. So now I can use the, the dongle with the uh, cable, interface cable, to the Rhino and I can talk through my uh, Senna helmet intercom with no wires. For more information on that, check the link over there. So that's my summary. It's, um, yeah, it's first impressions. Once this lockdown ends, I'll be able to get out and test it a little bit, little bit more with all the other stuff that I've bought over the last couple of months. If you like this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.